Oh, Tess fan. How you doing out there? Hope everything's okay. Hope you're doing well. In this video, I'm going to um, debunk Exodus. It's a great myth story, and some people think that it's true. But oftentimes, the believer, the so-called Christian, want to believe that these things actually happen with these people from Israel, who, which I'm going to prove to you, were not even existing at the time that they said that these people was existing. Israel wasn't even here yet. But some people think that is true, and Moses raised his arms up, and God opened up the sea. It's a nice story if you're a child, but it didn't happen. And furthermore, why would God give commandments to a murderer? Moses had murdered somebody before he left out of Egypt. And all of a sudden, he done became holy. But let's go ahead and into this. The first thing I'm going to start off with is the story of Exodus and the people that's in it. And notice the date. The date is very important because I'm going to debunk this. I'm trying to get it up here for you to see it, but that would be... can't get it. Seventeen oh six BC. That's what it says. Seventeen oh six BC. I don't know if you can see that. But you can look in your own Bible. Get a reference Bible. You need that. A ref a reference Bible. Seventeen oh six BC. I want to be clear on this. 1706 B.C. Okay, enough of that. But this is the people. This is the first verse, and this was supposed to have been the people in Israel. And this is very key because I want you to, to uh, listen to these names. Now, there are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man and his household came with Jacob, Reuben, Simon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulon and Benjamin, Dan and Naphtali, Gad and Asher, and all those souls that came out the loins of Jacob were seventy souls, for Joseph was in Egypt already, and Joseph died, and all his brethren and all the generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceedingly, exceeding mighty. And the land was filled with them. Now there arose, there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto the people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when they, there falleth out any war, they join us. They'll join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so let them up out of the land. This is somebody just simply trying to explain that they was better than African people. That's all. That's all that is. But let's go on to this. This is supposed to be, these people, is supposed to be living in Egypt in 1706 B.C., Israelites. Now, a lot of people are touchy. These people that want to call themselves Christ, Christians, the believers, and they believe that happened. But for the non-believers, such as myself, I could see a whole other part of it, you know, where somebody was trying to be in a place where they wasn't and created a false story and fooled a lot of people with it. Now, this is, uh, you can find this, in the uh, encyclopedia or Wikipedia, it is called the history of ancient Israel and Judah. History of ancient Israel and Judah. Look that up so you can get your own. Because I'm not going to read all eight pages of this, but just to show you that these people 
when the first mention of Israel people came about. It was the 1200th century B.C. Iron Age 1. 1200 B.C. to 1000 B.C.E. Take a good look. Iron Age 1. 12,000 B.C.E. 1000 B.C.E. Now, let's get into this. It's going to get very interesting now. Now, it reads, The name of Israel, and I've read this in one of my other videos, The name of Israel first appears in the stele of the Egyptian pharaoh, Mernit Ptah, circa 1209 BCE. Now, I'm going to stop there for a second. This is Mernit Ptah. Nineteenth Dynasty of Ancient Egypt. Nineteenth Dynasty. Okay, let's finish. It says Israel is laid waste and his seed is no more. This Israel was a cultural and probably political entity of the central highlands well enough established to be perceived by the Egyptians as a possible challenge to their hegemony, but an ethnic group rather than an organized state. Archaeologist Paula McNute says it is probably during Iron Age One that a population began began to identify itself as Israelites in 1200 BCE. This is the first mention of Israelites differentiating itself from its neighbors via prohibitions on intermarriage and emphasis on family history and genealogy and religion. In the late Bronze Age, there were no more than about 25 villages in the highland, but this increased to over 300 by the end of Iron One, while the settled population doubled from 20,000 to 40,000. The villages were more numerous and larger in the north, and probably shared the highlands with pastoral nomads who left no remains. Archaeologists and historians, historians Historians attempting to trace the origins of these villages have found it impossible to identify any distinctive features that could define them as a specifically Israelite collared rim jars and four room houses have been identified. I'm sorry. Uh, let me go back. Archaeologists and historians attempting to trace the origins of these villages have found it impossible to uh, identify any distinctive features that could define them as specifically Israelite collared rim jars and four-room houses have been identified outside the highlands and thus cannot be used to distinguish Israelite sites. And while the pottery of the Holland villages is far more limited than that of low-land Canaanite sites, it develops typologically out of the Canaanite pottery that came before. Israel Finkelstein proposed that the oval or circular layout that distinguishes some of the earliest Highland sites and the common sense adaption to highland life and not necessarily revelatory of origins. Other Armenian, Armenian, Armenian sites also demonstrate a contemporary absence of pig remains at that time, unlike earlier Canaanite and later Philistine evacuations. In the Bible, Unearthed, 2005, Finkelstein 
and Sil Silberman summarized recent studies. They described how, up until 1967, the Israelite heartland in the highlands of western Palestine was virtually an archaeological terra incognita. Since then, the traditional territories of the tribes of Judah, Benjamin, Ephraim, and Manasseh have been covered by intensive surveys. These surveys have revealed the sudden emergence of a new culture contrasting with Philistine and Canaanite societies existing in the land of Israel earlier during Iron Age I. The new culture is characterized by the lack of port remains, whereas port formed 20% of the Philistine diet in places. An abandonment of the Philistine Canaanite customs having highly decorated pottery and the practice of circumcision. The Israelite ethnic identity had been created. Not from the exodus and a subsequent conquest but from a transformation of the existing Canaanite Philistine cultures. These surveys revolutionized the study of early Israel, the discovery of remains of dense network of Highland villages, all apparently established within the span of a few generations indicated that a dramatic social transformation had taken place in the Central Hill country of Canaan around 1200 B.C.E. Now, this is the first mention of Israelites. Once again, I'm going to show you this. No mention of Israelites until 1200 B.C.E., before the Common Era. The Iron Age. Iron Age 1. See? This is the first mention of Israelites. They can't be in the Bible in 1705 B.C. You can't have it because they wasn't born yet. It couldn't have been no Israelites there. And, and that, there, there you have it. You cannot have people escaping from Israel when they were not born yet. You can't do it. But yet people think that this story is true. It is not true. And once again, I'm trying to express that these are myth stories. This is going to be hard for the Christian because the Christian, the Christian believes that the Bible is a history book. It is not a history book. The encyclopedia is a history book. This is real history. And... A lot of times, Christian people can't deal with real history because they think that the Bible is a real history book, and it's not. And it's really sad that you have people that thinking that somebody died for them, it, it doesn't make any sense for somebody to be put up on the cross to die for you that just got here. That's also a myth story. I wouldn't trust that. And the same thing with the flood. And I'm going to do another video, and I'm going to also debunk the flood. You, you know, you can't you can flood the world with 15 cubits of water. You just can't do it. 15 cubits of water, for those of you who don't know what a cubit is, a cubit is one and a half feet. God flooded the world. Look it up in Genesis. Go ahead and read the story. The water rose 15 cubits up in the air, and God flooded the whole world. All the mountains with this 15 cubits of water. A cubit, like I said, is one and a half feet times 15 is 22 and a half feet of water. That is the height of your average house for a 500 or 600 year old man to build a boat with three decks. To be in this little bit of water would have been a waste of time. It's ridiculous. Mount Everest is 29,900 feet. That 24 feet of water did not cover no mountains. That is a myth story, boys and girls. 
man. See, they give you Bibles like these, and it'll throw you off because it don't have the date in it. So you can't compare. The pastor just got you, your head down in the book, and you shaking your head and going down with him. You, you don't have no dates in these books, and that's why they give you these books, so you won't know. But like I said, the Exodus story supposedly starting in 1706 B.C. Sorry about that. In 1706 B.C. is a ridiculous story. And... Sorry about the little black out there, but I just wanted to give you something else, as I always do, and, you know, look it up for yourself. You know, it's, it's a myth story. You can't have these people, once again, being in Egypt when they was not born yet. There is no mention of Israelite until 1200 century BCE, the Iron Age one. These people had came late in the game. They wasn't even in Egypt yet. So why would someone tell a ridiculous story like that? To get you to believe. Till next time. Hotep.